All right, so A2, they call it more complicated rational functions, and we're going to graph those. Okay, so basically, we were working within the vertex form yesterday. Now we're going to work in the standard form. Okay, so the standard form of a rational function is basically, um, looks like these four examples here, you basically have a top and you have a bottom. It's written as one single fraction. Okay, and it is more likely you would see a rational equation written in this form than vertex form. Okay, it's pretty rare actually that you ever see the vertex form. All right, so we are going to start by talking about vertical asymptotes. Okay, so vertical asymptotes. Okay, so vertical asymptotes come from, once again, the law that the math god wrote first. Thou shall not divide by zero. Okay, and that, that basically tells you exactly where you find potential vertical asymptotes. Okay, so for the first example here, I have x plus 3 over x minus 1. What is the one value that x cannot be? 1. Okay, so everybody okay with that? So we would say x cannot be 1, and if we were going to write this in interval notation, it would be from negative infinity to 1, and from 1 to infinity. Okay, so we are just simply looking at the bottom. I kind of erased them. And divide by zero. So, where is my possible asymptote at? Hmm? Nope, comes from the bottom. comes from your one restriction. So the value that makes that denominator zero is where vertical asymptotes occur. Okay. Number two. Okay, on question number two, what is the one value that x cannot be? Negative one. So everybody's looking at the denominator, right? The x plus one. And the value that makes that 0 is negative 1. So x cannot be negative 1. So what's the interval notation for that scenario? Negative infinity to negative 1. Hey, will somebody hit the door for me? I find that loud. Is anybody else? Yeah. Thank you. So where is my possible vertical asymptote y? Okay, good. X equals negative 1. Okay, now, every once in a while, you can get more than one vertical asymptote. Okay, so for question number 3, we have a denominator that is written in factored form, which we say, nice, thank you very much for doing that, because the idea is if I set that equal to 0, what are the two values that x cannot be? Okay, good. So x cannot be negative 1 or positive 1. Okay, so the interval notation for that would be negative infinity to negative 1, negative 1 to 1, and 1 to infinity. Now this is kind of an interesting thing that happens. Okay. So what are my, my two vertical asymptotes in this scenario? x equals negative 1 and positive 1. Okay, so I'm going to graph this one in decima so you can see what happens when you have more than one vertical asymptote. Okay, so we had, did anybody write that down?
x plus one. Oops, hold on. X plus one, thank you. And x minus one. Okay, so if I draw in, whoops, go away, uh, my, my two vertical asymptotes. So we said we had one at x equals negative one. Okay, you can see that one. And we also have one at x equals one. Do you kind of see what is happening here? Okay, if you were going to go and draw this purple function, how many lines would you have to draw? Three. Okay, so the idea is that this vertical asymptote kind of separates this into kind of what looks like three different functions. Okay, we have one that's on the right of the x equals one vertical asymptote. We have one that's in the middle and then one that's on the left. Interesting. That's a pretty cool looking function. Okay. So what if we have a scenario like number four? What if it is written in standard form as, a fo as opposed to factored form? You got to factor it, right? Yeah. So can you guys read that? Um, what are two numbers that multiply to negative six and add to negative one? So x minus 3 and x plus 2. So what are the values that x cannot be? 3 and negative 2. So the interval notation would be from negative infinity to negative 2, negative 2 to 3, and 3 to infinity. Okay, so again, you can see the three different pieces of this function. What else is the x? Oh, yes, you're right. Thank you. Good catch. So my vertical asymptotes are at 3 and negative 2. Okay, now I want to graph this one as well because this one also does something pretty gnarly. Are you ready? Okay, somebody have it written down because I can't remember that. Yes, I have it memorized. Okay, good. Let me get rid of those. Okay, so we had on the top it was two. Oh, not twenty-two. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Sometimes it like picks it up twice. Plus, minus three x plus nine. Okay. X squared. No, we can do the original. Not 66. That is different. Okay. So uh, this one, I'm going to type in my asymptotes as well. So we had one at x equals uh, negative 3, right? Is that right? Yeah. No, no, no. Positive 3. Positive. No, no. Positive 3. Oh, good lord. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Enter. And x equals negative 2. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Maybe I need to like not use my stylus. Okay. So did you know that there's a horizontal asymptote on this one? Okay, remember the the horizontal asymptote describes the very end behavior. Okay, so if I zoom way, way out, where are those two ends going to? if I can get this. What's the y value it's going to? Can you see that right there where I'm at? It says 1.988. And on the other side? Okay. So anybody want to guess what the horizontal asymptote is? It's 2. Remember that it only describes the end behavior. 
Uh, you get to use a calculator to figure that out. The only way you can figure it out without a calculator is by using calculus. And we are not going to do that in this class. Yes. Ah, good question. Um, Brittany said, are there two horizontal asymptotes? Can there be two horizontal asymptotes? There actually can be two horizontal asymptotes. We probably will not touch on those scenarios because they actually um, occur when you deal with square roots where you have plus or minus things going on. Uh, but there is not two horizontal asymptotes in this case. There is only one. Okay. Interesting though, yeah? Okay. So everybody okay with how to find a vertical asymptote? Set the bottom equal to zero. Okay. Let's talk about how to find horizontal asymptotes. I'm going to do this my way as opposed to uh, the book's way. So sorry if I offend you, but. Yeah. Or maybe I should say fine. Okay. So there's basically three scenarios that you have to look at when finding horizontal asymptotes. Three cases that can occur. Okay. Case number one, and I'm going to do this by example. So I'm going to make an equation up. Uh, the first one would be, let's say we have uh, 2x to the third plus 4x squared minus 8 over 5x to the fourth plus 3x minus 2. Okay, so that's a pretty complicated rational um, function. But what you do is you simply look at the leading term on the top and the bottom. Okay, so on the top we have 2x cubed and on the bottom we have 5x to the fourth. Okay, and all you're going to do is analyze the exponents. So, is it bigger on the top or bigger on the bottom? Bottom. Okay, so to state this kind of in words, um, if the leading term is bigger, maybe leading terms, hold on, let me say that differently, exponent, sorry, is bigger on bottom, then we will always have the same horizontal asymptote, and it will always be at zero. Case number two. Let's say this time we have 2x to the third plus 4x squared minus 8 over 5x to the third plus 3x minus 2. Okay. So again, we're still looking at the exact same things. We're only looking at the first term on the top and comparing it to the first term on the bottom. What do you notice this time? They're the same. Okay. If they're the same, whoops, then this will completely depend on the polynomial. Okay, in this case, we will have one at y equals two fifths. Can somebody tell me where I got two fifths from? No. Exactly. Okay, so that just sim simply came from the leading coefficients in front of those first two terms. Pause for a brief second. Let me go back really quickly to this. Uh,
No, it wasn't that one. Which one was it? Oh, this one. So remember this question on the homework? Which case is this? It's the same. Do you see now where this horizontal asymptote came from? The two is in front. Horizontal asymptote, but two. So it's my third case. Bigger on the top. So let's say we have 2x cubed plus 4x squared minus 8 over 5x squared plus 3x minus 2. So if it is bigger on top, anybody want to tell me about it? Example. We did the one just like this. Yeah, when it's bigger on top, we have a slant asymptote. Okay, so we don't have a horizontal asymptote, but instead have a slant asymptote. So that's like example four that we did in the worksheet or tried to do. So we can say no horizontal, but instead a slant. And how do I find the equation of the slant asymptote? Do long division. Don't worry, we'll do an example. If I write this down. Okay, you ready? Oh. Hmm. Internet must be slow today. When it died. Okay, does everybody have these cases written down? You want to make sure you have this written down. In your notes, highlighted, circled, starred, bolded, colorful, whatever you need. Tell me when I'm ready to go on, or you are ready to go on. So where I'm going to go next is I'm going to go down to the homework assignments off of this page. So if you want to scroll down, that's where I'm headed. Good, good, good. No good? All right, so blah 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 There's a lot of blah 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 in this. Okay, here we go. So basically what I'm going to require of you is that you are going to have to uh state the domain. You are going to need to be able to find uh asymptotes, both vertical and horizontal, so I'm gonna say asymptotes. Um, also, I want you to be able to find x-intercepts, okay, those are very easy to find, okay, so basically three pieces of information that you need to be able to find. All right, so question number one, first of all, what's my domain? Where do I have a restriction? Negative one, so x cannot be negative one so therefore we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative one okay next thing we're going to talk about is the horizontal asymptotes okay so looking at the cases that you just wrote down is this 
bigger on the top, bigger on the bottom, or do we have a same case? Same. So where is my asymptote at? Y equals 1. Everybody okay with y equals 1? Because the number in front of those x's are is 1, and 1 over 1 is 1. How do I find an x-intercept? Okay. Very simply, we just set the top equal to 0. So to find the x-intercept, set top equal to 0. So can I go straight to the fact that if if I set the top equal to 0, it's just negative 5. Anybody confused by that fact? Good? No. OK, I got some funny faces. Where are you lost? Go ahead, say it. The x-intercept. OK, so remember the x-intercept is finding a 0. If we set the equation equal to 0, we are just setting the top equal to 0. Because remember, where you have the bottom, you would multiply it over. No, it does not. Miss Nolte asks for it. OK. All right. So here we go. So you should be able to plot all of this information that I just stated. Okay, You should be able to plot a vertical asymptote at negative 1. a horizontal asymptote at 1, and an x-intercept at negative 5. Now, I'm betting that somebody in this classroom can look at this and tell me what it looks like. Does anybody want to make an educated guess before I type it into this box? Okay, so it's going to be an hourglass, right? And we're going to have one of those sides going through that point. Okay, so it's going to look like we've got something on this side, and we're going to have something on this side. Okay, let's double check. So we had x plus 5 over x plus 1, right? Okay, so everybody agree? We nailed that one. And we could even plot in our, our type in our asymptotes to make sure that we're everything looks perfect. How are we doing so far? Super awesome? Super not awesome? Super medium? I don't know if that's a super thing, but... All right, here we go, number two. Dun, 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 dun. All right, now number two is written a little bit more super. So where do I start, start to find domain restrictions? Ooh, good job. Okay, so the first thing I'm looking at is where is the denominator equal to 0? Okay, so if I factor that, what two numbers multiply to 3 and add to negative 4? Negative 3 and negative 1. So the values that x cannot be are 3 and 1. So vertical asymptotes, what do you think? 3 and 1? Okay. Horizontal asymptote. Okay, I'm looking at my three cases. Is this bigger on the top, bigger on the bottom, or is this the same? Same. So where is my horizontal asymptote? Y equals... One. Everybody okay with y equals 1? Okay. Now I would like for you to also state the x-intercept. So what do I do to find the x-intercept? Okay, so, oh my gosh, I can't write x-intercept. Let's try that again. 
x intercept. So if I set the top equal to 0, what do I need to do? Factor. So what two numbers multiply to negative 3 and add to positive 2? So positive 3 and negative 1. So I have two x-intercepts. What are they? Negative 3, positive 1. Everybody okay there? Good, good. Okay, here we go. We're going to graph this. I'll come way over here to graph this information. So I said we have a vertical asymptote at 3. 1, 2, 3. And at 1. We have a horizontal asymptote at positive 1. We also have x-intercepts at negative 3 and 1. Wait a second. Okay, how is it possible we can have an x-intercept at 1? <coughs> but we have a vertical asymptote because we can't use 1. Okay, so watch this. Back in my original equation. If I rewrite this equation in factored form, the top factors to x plus 3 and x minus 1, what is the bottom factor to? x minus 3 and x minus 1. So what happens? They cancel each other out. What happens when things cancel out? We get a hole in the graph. Okay, so there is a hole in this graph. There is a hole at x equals 1. Because there's a hole because if I plug 1 into the original equation, it would be undefined. I cannot divide by 0. I'd get 0 on the bottom. Okay. So back over on my graph, I'm going to... Well, actually, let's graph this. Let's type this in the calculator. I mean the decimals. So is x squared plus 2x minus 3, right? Divided by x squared minus 4x plus 3. Are you ready? Dun, 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 dun. What do you see? What? Ah, uh, there. I don't think there's a slant. It's still horizontal. But how many vertical asymptotes do you see? There's only one vertical asymptote. Where is my one vertical asymptote at? So, what was happening at 1? It's undefined. Do you see the hole? Oh, I got it. Ready for the mind blow? I'm going to type this equation in. 
guys see the one I'm looking at? The reduced one? So on the top I had x plus 3, is that right? And then divided by x minus 3. Do you see it? They are exactly the same equation, except, yeah. So if I delete the black one, the very first one, and trace my line now. The whole exists exactly at the value of 1, negative 2. Watch what I can do algebraically. Okay, so that means if I use the reduced function, I can find the y value of my whole. Okay, so to graph this accurately on my graph, I would draw a whole at 1, negative 2, and now graph my function. Awesome. It's good stuff, right? How's everybody doing right now? Oh, that's Daniel. Yeah, I don't know. A little bit shocked. Like it don't like holes. The holes don't like holes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, see, why do you even start doing it? Because they're exactly the same equation. One is just reduced with a hole in it. My brain is another equation. See the the red box right here? If the two equations are the exact same, x plus 3 over x minus 3. That's where I got that from, and I just plugged one in. Okay, so let's do a couple more and let's get that confidence back up. I promise it is. Okay, we're going to do the same exact thing, but we're going to work with question number four. Okay, so let's start with domain restrictions. What do I have uh, for domain restrictions? What are the values that x cannot be? Okay, so x cannot be 2 or negative 3. So do I have vertical asymptotes? Oh, thanks. Good call. Vertical asymptotes at? 2 and 3. Are, are we 100% sure that those are, in fact, vertical asymptotes this time? Okay. How, how do we not have vertical asymptotes? When do holes occur? When they cancel. So is there anything on the top that's going to cancel with something on the bottom? No. No canceling, straight up vertical asymptotes. There's no holes in this graph. <sighs> <sighs> Horizontal asymptote. Okay, now the bottom is in factored form. I need to think about the standard form. If I was going to FOIL that out on the bottom, what would the first term be? X squared. So if I have X over X squared, is it bigger on the top or bigger on the bottom? bottom. So everyone agree I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Everybody okay there? That all makes sense. Perfect. Can I quickly find the x-intercepts? 
why did I get x squared? Because if I FOIL, see how at the bottom is in factor form? I have to have it in standard form to do a horizontal asymptote. So if you do x times x, that's x squared. Got it? Are you sure? You're kind of tilting your head. I feel like you're just giving me the, I don't understand. You don't like it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, how do I find the x-intercepts? So, top equal to zero. So this one is super easy, right? Everybody okay with the x-intercept is zero? Okay, that's all the information we have. Here we go. Okay, so I have vertical asymptotes at two. at negative 3 and I have an x-intercept at 0. Does anybody want to make an educated guess as to what this graph looks like before I graph it? How many pieces is it going to have? Three pieces. The middle is going to be parabolic? Possibly. What's probably going to happen in the end? Oh, I forgot to graph my horizontal asymptote. Sorry, guys. There we go. It's kind of already there, but it, there's more there. What's the end behavior going to be? Where are those two ends going to? It's going to zero. Okay, so probably the outside two ones are going to look kind of like the hourglass. Okay, here we go. So we have x over, we had, uh, what was it, x plus minus 2 and x plus 3. Someday I'll remember those things, I don't know. Boom, there it is. Why are you using this? Yeah, like when are we ever going to use these in real life? Exactly. Mm. Okay, so all you have to do now is you go back to your piece of paper and you just draw what you've seen. Okay, so this is what I want you to understand about this. Okay, I will fully expect that you will need a calculator to gra graph these functions. Okay, but without a calculator, you need to tell me the stuff on the left. I need to know what the domain restrictions are. What are the asymptotes and what are my x-intercepts? You can find those without using a calculator and then use the calculator as the aid. Do we understand that? Okay. I'm going to do one more that has a slant asymptote. This will be my last example. Okay. All right. So for question number five, what is the first thing that I want to do here? It's going to be a little different. Okay. We want to watch out for the scary hole. So how do I find holes? What do I need to do? Factor the top and the bottom. Okay, so on the top, what is uh, what are two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to negative 5? Close. No. Multiplies to positive 6. Yeah, that was a tricky one. X minus 2, X minus 3. Yeah, especially with the bottom right, you're like, oh, it's going to definitely be a 1 in there. So, because uh, that's multiplied to positive 6 and add to negative 5. It's one of the trickiest ones to factor. So, do I have a hole? No, nothing is canceling, so no holes. Alright, so what's my domain? What's the one value that x cannot be? 1. x cannot be 1, so therefore we have a... Oh, thank you. Is that everybody? Oh, and okay. Joe, Jody, Scott, Lauren. 
Do I Lauren see Lauren? Okay. That might be okay if we miss one person. I'll be okay with that. Um, where were we? Oh yeah. Okay, vertical asymptote. X equals one. Yes. The asymptotes are we talking about? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. So where's my horizontal asymptote on this one? Okay. Is it bigger on the top or is it bigger on the bottom? Top. So when it's bigger on the top, we have a slant. Slant. So how do I find the slant asymptote? Long division. So let me show you how to do this. It is not incredibly hard. You've done long division. So we have x minus 1 and we have x squared minus 5x plus 6. Okay, so looking at the first terms, what do I have to multiply x by to make it x squared? X, so x goes up top. Everybody following in the back? Everybody good? <laughs> okay, so x goes on top, then I multiply it through, and I have x times x, which is x squared. And x times negative 1? Here comes the scary part. Be careful. Subtract. X squareds go away. How many x's do I have? Good. I think everybody said negative 4 that time. Yay, we all agree. Negative 4. Okay, then I do it again. What do I have to multiply x by to make it negative 4x? Negative 4. And if I multiply that through, I have negative 4 times x, which is negative 4. And negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. So I get a remainder of... Two. Now this is the one time in math, Connor. Hi. Hi. That we get to ignore the remainder. Because the equation of the slant is y equals x minus 4. Okay, so you ignore the remainder. What's the last thing I need to find? Zero. Yeah. My zeros. So can we go straight to our zeros? Yes. What are my two x-intercepts? Mm -hmm. Two and three. Everybody okay with that? Two and three? Yes. All right, here we go. So we're going to graph this information. I have a vertical asymptote at one. Draw really good asymptotes, it'll help you. Okay, I have a slant asymptote at y equals x minus 4. So how do I draw x minus 4? Down 4. So I have 4. And then I have a slope of 1. Everybody remembers that? Up 1, over 1. So I have this slant asymptote that's like... By the way, where does this one cross the x-axis? My slant at 4. This is at 4, right? Just so you know. Okay, then I also have my x-intercepts at 2 and 3. Zach and Sean, are we good? 2 and 3. Okay, so that's all the information I just concluded from the left. Now, does anybody want to make an educational guess as to what this looks like? Nice. I saw a lot of people doing the same thing. Okay, it kind of has that hourglass look, but like with a slanty thing going on. So the other one kind of goes in the other little opposite X spot. Do I need to graph this one to verify and prove to you that that does look like that? Do you just believe me? You got a question, Brady? It's a dumb question, but are there any horizontal asymptotes that are quadratic? Uh, no, that is a good question. No. Your asymptotes are always linear. Good. Yeah. I was trying to think of a counterexample, but I couldn't think of one. 
at least in this section. I was trying to think of one outside of this class, but I think we sh should be good. All right, homework time. Good stuff, right? So, what am I ever doing? Uh, this? Uh, this? Uh, this? Uh, I forget all this by tomorrow. So, yeah, it's really not. Just make sure everybody has this on their phone. And it's my best friend. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. Thank you. Awesome. I'm sure you get a little bit of Star test? Yeah. You guys will like logs. I love logs. And I can answer that question of where we've ever seen this again. Like logs? I mean, it depends on what you do, of course, but I can give you scenarios where they. I really hope being a veterinarian is not the small. No, there's not a lot of calculus. I bet you you need basic calculus, though, and I need mean, stats. Yeah. Usually, anything medical needs something. Like, all I know is I need to load up on my math science. Yeah. Oh, my knee just Same. I know you had to get up at four o'clock. That's my what does that say? It is not easy. I think that will be easy. This stuff is not easy. And it's like we are easy.